Morning, even afternoon, we got a banger for y'all today, baby. What we got for you here is a video from Josh. As always, I'm putting his YouTube in the description. Be sure to go hit the sub button over there and watch all of his videos. Well, Josh decided to make McDonald's French fries and essentially do a blind taste test to see is his fry better than a McDonald's French fry. I'm sure anybody watching this video has had a McDonald's French fry, so you know how iconic that is. And it's essentially Josh trying to make that better. If y'all do enjoy this and you're fat, Excuse me? Leave a like on this, hit the sub button. Most importantly, be sure to tell somebody you love them. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. McDonald's fries, but they're better, huh, Josh? It's gonna be tough. Today we're going up against what I think might be one of the most overrated foods on planet Earth. The <laughs> McDonald's french fries is probably the most iconic fast food item that has ever existed, period. Let me make a quick point. If you go to every major metropolitan city across the globe and ask if someone has had a McDonald's french fry, many of them will probably say yes. That is true. Too many of them will say that it's the best. So mm. today we're putting that to the test. Is the McDonald's fry still as iconic as it once was? So we're gonna get a bunch of blind taste testers with a mix of different fast food fries Ooh. and see if they can still pick out the McDonald's french fry with no eyesight, only taste. Then once we've done that, we go head to head. So with that being said, let's begin. Okay, so I have three taste tests. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna let y'all know, man. So for me, whenever I ate fast food, I was never really a fry person. Uh, growing up, for example, uh, obviously I've been fat my whole life. Uh, growing up, uh, my dad, we would go to Wendy's a lot. <clears throat> Wendy's nuts, yeah, 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 okay. And instead of getting like a burger and fries, I would get like three junior bacon cheeseburgers. I would prefer the cheeseburger over the actual French fry. I've never really been a fry guy, but I will say, the older I've gotten, I start to appreciate them a little more, like Chick-fil-A, the waffle fries, or um, gosh, what's that other one? I I kind of, listen, this is a hot take. I kind of mess with Whataburgers a little bit. Whataburger, they uh, they do the, uh, I think they do like the loaded one or something That's like that. And they're going to see if they can identify which one is the McDonald's I'm starting fry. to appreciate is fries the older I get. Like we all think it is. We're going to find out. Make room over here, buddy. I will be rearranging this. What's that one bottom one? left? That one looks breaded. That's too good, bro. Number one. That's not the McDonald's fry. Number two. That's so similar to the last one. This has a higher chance to me of being the McDonald's fry. Number three. Ah, oh, this is the McDonald's fry. Wow. Number four. That is so close to being a McDonald's fry. That's crazy. So now we're on our last one, number five. Popeyes. That is not a McDonald's fry. So it's in between three or four. Four was pretty salty. I think that's a Wendy's one, but I think three is the McDonald's fry. Ooh. Number three is the McDonald's fry. Wow, I'm actually shocked. Good palate, Vic. <laughs> Cam is next, and Cam has a restaurant background. One. That might be. Two. <laughs> that is not the McDonald's fry. Three. Four. Five. Nope. I think one. Boom! One. Wow. I'm actually shocked that this is working. <laughs> we have one more. So we have Kevin. Some people in the comments will probably be thinking, oh no, not this guy again. I feed off of the haters. Number one, <laughs> that is not a McDonald's fry. I like the astuteness of the choice. Number two, that is not a McDonald's fry. Number three, earlier he did say he knows his fries. This is not a McDonald's fry. He knows because it's breaded. You haven't even tasted it. I just know. Okay. Number four. Mmm, that could be a McDonald's fry. And finally, number five. Number four could have been, but unfortunately it was not because number five is undoubtedly What a burger, huh? Fry. Kevin, you are wrong. That was the Whataburger fry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be here all week. Clearly it's an iconic fry, but why? Chemicals. Now look, this isn't some sort of smear campaign, but we need to understand this. Things like dextrose, sodium acid pyrophosphate goes into a water bath. Ah, uh, yes, of course, sodium acid. Yep. These fries get dunked in. So yep. how do you beat science? Proper technique and good ingredients. So I'm gonna make the French fry recipe from my cookbook, Texture Over Taste, and put that up against my own McDonald's style chemical bath French fry. Whichever fry wins competes against the famous- They McDonald's looked really fries. similar. So these are fries. Real nice, yummy wummy. Potatoes, fat, and salt in just about every scenario yep. is, well, gonna taste good. So what would really ruin a good French fry? The taste, the flavor, or because you got a flaccid, zero crunch French fry, maybe even a chewy one, <clears throat> that. You know what's kind of funny is Alexis, my wife, she actually doesn't like, comment down below, let me know if any of you are like this. She, She's not a huge fan of like a crunchy French fry. She likes them when they're softer. Believe it or not. It's a secret that nobody seems to want to talk about or cover. It's Lexus texture. is, I, I'm, I'm like. plug the book here. I just want to make this point. Hey, get Josh's We're book, everybody. We're talking about flavor and we forgot about the other half of the conversation when it comes to food that we love. But it's also Excuse available me? for the in the description. Now that I'm off my soapbox, let's begin. First up, my cookbook recipe, but I'm using tallow instead of vegetable oil to get that classic McDonald's taste. Start by peeling three large, perfect potatoes. Listen, even McDonald's only selects 
the most perfectly shaped round potatoes. And by the way, the length of the potato will determine the length. Of That's your fast food so fry. If I had to pick one, by the way, if you happen to be doing more. I would recommend doing it over a small sheet of parchment paper because then when you're okay, done, I'm going back and forth here because waffle fries from Chick-fil-A are really, really good too. But that's kind of like its own avenue. I feel like I listen five guys. And they give you a million of them. Those French fries, bro. Y'all know. Wrap up the parchment paper like a mini garbage bag and toss all the skins at once. Instantly clean. Now, slice your potatoes into quarter That seems dangerous. I, that's why I could never be Obviously, a chef right there. I'd knife, cut my hand. I used a mandolin to get much more precise cuts. And it's, you know, honestly, much faster. If you don't have a knife, I don't know why you're here. Go get one. It doesn't have to be a fancy one. Now that you have your quarter inch thick plank, you're going to cut across that plank at quarter inch intervals. You end up with perfect. How do those look so perfect, bro? Josh, you're way too good, bro. Now their little band. To a large six to seven quart stock pot, add three quarts or three liters of water, one teaspoon or three grams of baking soda, one and a quarter tablespoon or 18 grams of kosher salt, two tablespoons or 28 grams of white distilled vinegar. Bring that to a boil over medium high heat, then drop in your potatoes. Lightly boil these for one to two minutes. Be very careful. This is super important. Do not cook these all the way through, depending on the elevation, humidity, and the trajectory of the sun. You may need to adjust cook time up or down. You want these potatoes to be nearly cooked, but still slightly raw. They should not break easily. If they do, well, uh, rip. Now, take them out using a spider and gently transfer to a paper towel lined baking sheet and dry them off as much as possible using more paper towels. You want these bone dry. Morbid comparison, but anyway. Now, in a separate large heavy bottom Dutch oven, you really want something like six to eight quarts in size minimum. Add just enough tallow to go up halfway up the pot. So like two and a half to three quarts. What is tallow? Well, my dear boy, you see tallow is quite literally rendered beef fat. You can make it yourself by heating a lot of mm. raw beef fat over low heat in a pan until it's rendered to a liquid state, which by the way will re-solidify if you chill it. You know, or you could just buy it at the store or literally on Amazon. It's way faster when you need this much. This is for the McDonald's vibes because McDonald's used to fry their fries in tallow. That's that old school, baby. Heat that to 350 Fahrenheit or 175 Celsius. I wonder what they fry in now. I didn't know that. Let fry for about one minute or until you have a pale dry crust on the outside of the fries. Don't get any color on the I don't know about you all, but like for me personally, I, I, I'll grill stuff. I'll never fry. Like there's something about burning oil on a stove that stresses me out. Like, right. I, I feel like I would burn my entire house down literally, bro. Like I want them pale, I'm not dry, coordinated enough. Now you have what I'd call your or I'd mess it up somehow. Repeat I'm too scared. Fries. I don't fry anything. At this point, once they're drained and dried off, which is funny because I'm fat. Freezer until frozen I love chicken solid. tenders. And by the way, you can leave them in there in the freezer until you're ready to use them pretty much indefinitely. Or you could use them as soon as they're solid, about three to four hours. Now keep your tallow in that pot because you're gonna use it again. Then when you're ready to so fry, they fry he fries them twice. Two fifty to three seventy five. Fahrenheit. 350 will produce a fry that's more similar to the color of a McDonald's fry. 375 will give you a little bit more of a browning. Neither are wrong. Follow your heart. You know, we all get caught up in our day to day. Focus so much on our goals that maybe we forget to make decisions for us or ourselves. Josh or ourselves. is so funny. Then pop in those fries. Yes, Josh. straight from the freezer in batches. Again, make sure that fat is not any higher than halfway up the pot because it will bubble a lot and let's not cause a fire. Okay? See? Be careful. That's exactly what I'm talking about, bro. Golden, but not too brown and beautifully crispy. Transfer to a wire rack lined baking tray and Immediately season generously with kosher salt. Do not wait. Salt sticks to hot, fresh fried food. Repeat with the mm. remaining fries and serve. Like right something away. new every day. The most beautiful fry I think I've ever made. Moving on to the McDonald's copycat chemical version. I actually literally bought those chemicals. Matter of fact, I had to buy a $500 bag of this stuff <laughs> and various hydrocolloids. So you're going to follow the exact same method as before, except the boiling liquid is going to have, well, yes, water, but also one tablespoon or eight grams of dextrose, five grams of sodium acid pyrophosphate. Yeah, that's. that's what, what is that? $600 just to get this and I have like 50 pounds of it. One <laughs> tablespoon or 14 grams of salt, one teaspoon or three grams of milk powder, one teaspoon or three grams of nutritional yeast, two tablespoons or 28 grams of beef flavoring, two tablespoons or 20 grams of vinegar, dip your fries in a little bath, same as before, dry them. Here they are side by side with the natural fries at the same stage. Oddly preserved color, but that makes sense since the pyromaniac stuff or whatever it is, is a color preserved. What does it does say it on that color, bag? That does it say don't use for safety? It's it's like they, they have safety warnings all over that bag, bro. This time we're gonna be frying in a vegetable canola oil blend instead of beef fat. And we did our exact same par fry for the same amount of time, dried them, froze them, and then fried them one more time. Here they are side by side. Now we need to see which French fry will go ahead really with McDonald's. Josh's will look it better. Be the French fry with real ingredients and technique or the McDonald's chemical bath version. <laughs> then we'll go head to head with McDonald's. Okay, so me and a blind taste tester will taste these. I'm gonna taste them without a blindfold. You heard that? Wow, those are really good. So these are the OG version from my cookbook right here. And then this is a riff off the cookbook recipe using what McDonald's uses, a tiny, 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 like microscopic amount of sodium acid pyrophosphate and beef flavoring. 
Funny enough, they're actually not as crunchy. They're a bit more flaccid, but they're almost like chewier, which I don't like. The actual real beef flavor from the tallow, it's like giving me steak slash burger vibes. I just already know that this belongs with the burger. So I'm choosing this one, but now we're gonna bring in the blind taste test. All right, Vic, are you ready? I'm There's sure no ready. way okay, he picks the chemical number one, right? One. Damn, that's great. Now fry number two. Again, a double fry. First one's better. This one, it's okay. a bit saltier. That's really all it goes past like a normal fry. The OG one, the beef flavors really come through. And I think that's what kicks it up a notch over a normal fry. It looks like a McDonald's fry. But what you get out of this is just really deep beef flavoring on top of a potato, which steak and potato is already good. This is all of that in one fry. Mm. That is super powerful. This basically gives me artificial vibes. And this is just like perfectly executed, real legitimate food. And it's better texturally. If you're to make anything ever, this is what you gotta make. This is insane. These are the best fries I've ever had. Wow. Right. This is a good feeling, Big Flex. Now we know that real technique does prevail and you don't need chemicals. Now that that's done, we still need to find out if this is going to beat the McDonald's fry. I mean, there's no way Josh's doesn't beat a McDonald's fry, right? We know that natural ingredients prevail, right? So, fingers crossed. All right, get a little refresher here. Go on. You ever had something so goddamn good? Let's say you're eating something categorically. Whatever the category is, let's take french fries out of the equation. Maybe there's a certain brand you really like. And then you the eat something else does so brand, good. And it makes you forget that the other brand even exists. That is exactly what these fries do. You eat this fry and you might go, oh, my childhood nostalgia is kicking in. No, that's pretty good. Yeah, I like that. But then you realize that there are things that are better in life. As you get older, there are the finer things in life, things that are really worth doing or eating in this case. These are those fries, but this isn't complete without the blind taste test. There's no way. know which one's which. I mean, let's be real here. Number one. Too good. Number two. <laughs> Poopy! It's not that the McDonald's fries are bad, just these are so much better. A lot of butt betters we've had, there's been astronomical winners. This is down here, this is all the way up here. Let's just take texture out of the equation. Even flavor-wise, right? This is the perfect painting. And then when this was created, you just turn it gets the smoked, McDonald's. All the way down. Guess your this fries aren't that good, huh? This, I didn't know a french fry could exist like this, but it does now. I can't believe I'm giving this recipe away for free. All right, it's on page. <laughs> Oh, Josh, bro. His videos are too good, man. I, I gotta tell y'all, listen, those, I'm not, I'm not really, like I was saying, I'm not a huge fry guy, but I can tell that the ones Josh made would be immensely better. I've been, you know, been getting into, I, listen, any pota potatoes are good, right? Fried food is good. I'm fat. <laughs>